Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I am joined by my wonderful co-host, Ricardo Martinez. Uh, and today we are interviewing uh, Bill McDonald, a Bitcoiner, a meetup organizer of Bay Area Bitcoin. And so I'm told by my colleague, Thomas, an all-round stand-up guy. How are you doing today, Bill? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, I think Thomas is, is, is probably lying to you. Last time uh, we were together, I may have been overserved at the bar and, and was unable to catch up with him the following day because I had to stay in bed. But it's nice that he thinks I'm a stand up guy. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, it sounds like uh, you just, you know, the, the bar staff might have paid a trick on you or something. Is you know, it's definitely not your fault. Um, nothing on your character. Yeah. I mean, I was just trying to, I thought I was ordering waters. Honest mistake. I, mean, I can completely understand. <laughs> But yeah, it's um, but yeah, it's great to, to have you on, and um, I'll, I'll I'll get a question to get us going. Um, obviously, as I said in the intro, uh, you're um, uh, organizer of, of the Barrier Bitcoin meetups. Um, when did you start getting involved in the Bitcoin or crypto uh, meetup scene? That's a fair question. In 2015, I kind of first got into Bitcoin, and when I say got into, I mean heard that a thing called Bitcoin existed. Had you asked me to explain it, it would have been the worst and most inaccurate uh, description of Bitcoin you've ever heard. Um, around that time, Coinbase was sort of one of the only things that I knew about, you know, that was had a UX that was usable. Um, right around that same time, 2016 into 2017, uh, found my way, you know, trading some Bitcoin for Ethereum and then landing on Poloniex. And all of a sudden my Ethereum is becoming every shit coin that went to zero. I'm the worst gambler ever. It was, I mean, Gollum, uh, Oyster Pearl, Shellcoin, Dragon Chain, Array. Um, I mean, not, not one of them. Uh, on the beach one day, I definitely sent money to something called iDice, uh, which... <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it was just a pure scam. They just, they let you send money to them. And then that was the end of it. Um, but in 2017, I started hosting Crypto Monday events in San Francisco. Um, so I think that's when I got into the meetup scene in general. Uh, but, but since then I have, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm maximal-ish, right? I'm going to tend towards Bitcoin, but I don't have any hatred towards someone out there defying to the, you know, to the, to the cows come home. Uh, in general though, now um, I just do the Bitcoin meetups uh, in San Francisco. I gotcha. I am. Um, I, I think I would agree that I, I'd say I'm like more. Yeah. I always say I'm like a bit fo Bitcoin focused guy. Like, you know, I'm not too, but I, I like to, you know, uh, hear about other stuff. It's sometimes fun. Um, yeah. yeah I put, I in my, in my Twitter handle, I say I'm a non-toxic maximalish. I, I don't I don't shit on other people. Um, I, I think the community is just getting to a size where if you want to start making the circle sort of orders of magnitude bigger on, on who you're bringing into the circle, you're going to need to talk to, you know, normies and people who don't want to get yelled at because they're looking at things and they're reading articles. Um, and I'm just too old. You know, I don't have the energy of the, the maximalists who do listen that we, we owe them a a fair amount of gratitude to sort of protect the um, integrity of the community and the system and all that. Uh, I just, I don't, I don't have that in me. <laughs> I feel you. I haven't got time to be so mad as I, but I, yeah, you're, you're right. Like it's a, uh, it's a, a job that sometimes needs to be done. Uh, I, what, something that you said, obviously you did crypto Mondays and then now you do Bitcoin based meetups. And I've been to quite a few crypto meetups and I've hosted a few Bitcoin meetups in my time. Um, and I, I noticed like quite a few differences between, the two, like the kind of people that are coming, the discussions that I had, like what are the kind of like, what would you say are the key differences that you find um, in the US between like the crypto based meetups and the Bitcoin specific kind of based meetups? Yeah, the, the crypto meetups were a little easier because every topic was a possible topic. I mean, just put any word in, for, in front of the word crypto and it could have been a topic. So, you know, these guys were making NFT concert buttons. You could have a regulation um you know update on re regulations every other month you could talk about investing in crypto um where that type of um that type of event they're they're actually sometimes really interesting they would often bring in 
investor types, lawyer types, and general technology types. Um, and it was more of like a room full of strangers, I think might be the best way to describe it, where Bitcoin meetups are much more like a community and Bitcoin may not even, you might not even get to the, the Bitcoin. You might get into like, um, you know, liber libertarianism, right? Or just other sort of concepts within the community that are either Bitcoin specific or Bitcoin ten tangential or just its own topic. Whether or not they're investors specifically or lawyers specifically, it, it seems like it's much more normal people. I, I don't know if that's the right way to describe it. That said, though, meetups can be a little harder because, especially with the slow pace that Bitcoin goes, you know, if you look at how many years it just took Taproot to get sort of thought through, signaled for, you know, and, and pushed through, like, well, shit, how many Taproot meetings are you going to have over five years? Um, I prefer the, I think, I think the crypto, the crypto meetups are fun for what they are, right? You're sort of looking into the future of what's possible, big question mark on if it's possible or not, right? I think a lot of Bitcoiners would say it's not. So it's just a bullshit, a bullshit meeting, um, but still sort of fun to look at things through, look at many different topics through, through this different lens where, where Bitcoin is much more like hanging out with your friends, I'd say. Yeah. yeah where, where, where are you, where are you located? Uh, me, uh, so I'm I'm located in the UK. Uh, it's like my home base. But then I just spent three months in Brazil, so I guess I'm not too good at being located here. Um, but yeah, so I've done like a few meetups in London, like co-hosted a few. Um, but since I left, it's now gone on and continued and grown without me, which is a good thing to be honest. Because I, I think I find like so I think when you said the crypto ones are more fun, like I've been to one crypto one that was really fun, but then I went to a quite a few that were just kind of. Just like, I, don't know, I feel like I, I kind of get jaded by it because it's just like, oh, I heard about this thing. And it's like, yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, it's just always like some random crap that like I don't care about. And then there's always like someone who's just got into crypto four months ago is telling me why like Ethereum is the best thing on earth. And I'm like, yeah, but like, it's not actually. And then it just, we I always go on these awkward things. Whereas with the Bitcoin ones, I find the ones where it gets really technical a bit like, I, not for me because like I like a bit of technical stuff don't get me wrong like I like to learn something new but then I find that like it can go on for like an hour of someone just lecturing at me and I'm like dude I, I, I struggle to go to any lectures at university let alone at a Bitcoin like meetup but I like the really casual ones where you can talk to someone one-on-one -on -one and like learn something you didn't you didn't know from a guy smarter than you or like talk about something else random and so I really like the casual Bitcoin meetups but I found like they're the ones where I've had the most fun and like learned about like more about Bitcoin and lightning and stuff like that as well um and there's things like you know like i i get like absolutely smashed and have like uh have like uh two hours of like getting completely wasted and talking about like vr games or something <laughs> like, yeah, like a big exactly. yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, the crypto events i think you or i are on the same page with the crypto events where there's a point at which you realize the next crypto event is no different than the one you went to three years ago it's just either a new company or a new the the new thing and when there are new people and it's the first time they've sort of heard these concepts it is very interesting to them. In, in, in 2017, I, I knew I could have told you what Gollum was, right? And, and I could have told you, you know, the top 100, let's just say, projects, I probably knew what they were. Where now, if you were to spit out a name, I'd be like, I don't know, is that a smart contract platform? I don't know. And so I have my friends who know I'm into Bitcoin. And, you know, they'll ask me crypto questions. And it's, it's not that I don't understand the premise. It's just, I don't care. You know, um, if there's a thousand projects, I bet 10 make it and really make it, whatever that means. But I'm not going to keep up with the 995 that don't these days. Um, and then on, on the Bitcoin side, and so in San Francisco right now, we, we have, well, what, what happened was <clears throat> prior to the pandemic, there was Socratic seminars, uh, San Francisco Bit Devs, and then there was Lightning Devs. So both those meetups are going on pretty regularly, and <clears throat> and uh, there was also, I mean, you can always find a crypto meetup. That that part's easy. Um, during the pandemic, everything just stopped, um, and then what happened with our group specifically? A handful of us were on a Telegram group um, and meeting meeting up at Ocean Beach, which is a shitty freezing cold beach in San Francisco where you wouldn't actually go swimming, but you drink beers there. Um, or there's a park uh, in, the, in the mission called Dolores Park. And we were getting together, just 
when, when we could and doing our six feet of spacing or whatever the hell we were doing. And then finally someone on um, Telegram, you know, almost in a frustrated way was like, can we just fucking get together? Like, can we just have a meetup? And then there's a bar in the city, Aces Bar. It's Bitcoin friendly. Um, and so we started, we started having meetups there. And, you know, 10, 10, 15 people were coming all the time. We were doing it once a week in the beginning. Um, and now, and now every other week. And right now that's one of the only Bitcoin events happening in the city. Socratic Seminars is, um, is about to pick back up, which is great. And there has been one, one lightning devs meeting, but, but right now that, that's the only thing we have going on. That is a casual, that's a casual version. So it's always, um, it's always sort of the one where we're having beers, talking about VR. What's great is the, the lineup of people, because I'm with you on the more technical ones. Like I love going to Socratic Seminar. I can kind of keep up in the beginning, but near the end, I don't know what these nerds are talking about. They are 10 times smarter than me on my work, on their worst day, you know, on their best day, they're a thousand times smarter than me. So by the end, me and my buddy, Tommy, we sit in the back, right? We just, we just sit in the back and we, we, we crack jokes and these guys are solving some complicated and nuanced problems in real time. The ones that we have at ACEs are fire because you have sort of three or four different types of people, right? You get people like me and Tommy, just normal people. We like Bitcoin, but we don't work in Bitcoin. We're decently knowledgeable. Then you got, let's say Casey. Casey's a lightning expert, an ex-frog. He is just a Bitcoin in general expert. Any technical question you have, they can answer over beers, right? Or over a shot of whiskey. And then, oh, in comes, you know, um, Amy, and she works at Kraken. And so you end up getting this real good mix of, um, or Connor works at Unchained. You get a real good mix of normies uh, and enthusiasts, fucking experts, and industry people. And so when the, when the, when the stars align on those meetups, they're better, I think, than, they're, they're better for sort of anyone to get any question they want answered than even a Socratic seminar, which, um, you know, is, is for me sometimes too smart smarty pants um in like 2017 i was also you know studying the top shitcoin projects and stuff like that and i also have kind of stopped keeping tabs on it so much um but san francisco is known as like a mecca for tech and stuff like that you're real close to silicon valley were there any crypto projects that kind of grew out of these meetings that you guys were organizing you know not the, the ones we were organizing it changed every week um it changed every week. There was a panel. It wasn't a get together. So we would have a panel um, and we're going to talk about, you know, stable coins. So, you know, we'll have um, Ample Forth and I can't remember the other ones there. So there were gen the people that we generally brought there were already doing something, right? We, they, they'd be in the front sort of answering questions. And then I, I can't say for sure one way or another. I didn't get the vibe. Um, I didn't get the vibe that there was that sort of community building, but just, I think because of the nature of our events, I, I'm sure that there were other events that maybe had hackathons or, you know, um, things like that, where maybe some projects did sort of pop out of the ether that way. The ether EM. You guys see what I did there? Boom. <laughs> yeah, I say, I, I, I kind of, I kind of heard it and wanted to laugh, but I thought I couldn't give you the, uh, the pleasure. <laughs> no, it's, um, yeah, I, I guess, um, yeah, it's interesting. Like what you say about the, the learning side of things as well. Like, uh, I think it just, yeah, I think for me, it's like, uh, yeah, definitely it's interesting stuff. And I think, don't get me wrong. Like I, it sounds like I'm kind of shitting on the, the smart lectures, but actually like when I went to, uh, the lightning summit in El Salvador, it was like one of the coolest things was going to the, like the room where people were kind of like building stuff oh like, somebody's somebody's dropping a humble rag oh no oh god i didn't mean to okay well, sorry i was in El Salvador. When, I, when, I, when i went to an unnamed conference uh, about bitcoin <laughs> um i can go and get the hat if you want um no when i went to an unnamed conference um i it was like the room where there were people were building stuff like showing off atm like the atms and blah 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 like and and then there was another room where like people were like, like the more technical talks like that was the bit i thought was the coolest bit of it 
But at the same time, I'm like, I know me and I know that I like sit there shaking my leg and then like get distracted and like, you know, I'm like an ADHD ridden child. So I know I'm just going to fail to pay attention for too long. But for like 10 minutes, I'm like, wow, this is so cool. And then I'm like, I've got to do the next exciting thing. And, you know, so it kind of ruins it. But, um, but yeah, so I'm not necessarily shitting on them. <laughs> the, the event, were you in Miami? Uh, no, I, were you there in Miami? I well, when so. I was in Miami, <laughs> uh, you know, I didn't end up going to... I didn't end up going to any of the talks, um, probably for similar reasons. That and I know they're going to be on YouTube, or there's going to be a version of those talks on a variety of podcasts. Where being able to like catch up with people I hadn't talked to in a while, both in terms of just friendliness or just you know, I know that this guy's a smart guy, and so I can just ask him that way. Um, you know, ultimately is is how I spent the whole time. So I I, I totally get it. Yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. And I, I definitely enjoyed that a lot as well. Was like meeting a lot of people we'd had on the podcast, meeting some like uh, people I knew from Brazil and things like that. It was really cool. And I think, um, yeah, I just think it's that's all around a good way. I, I, I think it's interesting with Miami this year. Like I, I wanted to go, but like obviously not enough to go. Um, but like I didn't, I think like last year I had like a lot of FOMO because it was like, I really wanted to go and like bloody, you know, El Salvador adopted legal tender and all this. I was like, wow, you know, um, so there's a lot of like exciting buzz. And this year, I don't know, there was a lot of like news that came out, but I don't know whether it's just me being, I don't know, like jaded about things or I don't know what it was, but I just didn't really have any fun. I like, I wanted to go, but I just didn't. And I didn't really care. <laughs> so I don't it's know. If... No, it's, it's you. It's you right. uh, not wanting to have FOMO. Oh, anyway, fair th enough. Th this year's con th this year's conference was great. Um, the Good. year before the venue probably wasn't the best venue uh, for the amount of people they had this year they did it at the miami conference center right convention center so no problem it was built to hold that 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 many people um i do think there is a and this sort of goes back to what type of meetups make the most sense are the when we think about like the socratic seminars the lightning seminars the more technical ones they really cater to that the I don't call them the in crowd that's not the right word but like the core devs and, and the people who are them where my neighbor is never going to go to one of those things ever the 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 conference is is getting larger in that way where you're starting to get more and more of those people that aren't going to go to the technical stage right they actually do want to hear from Serena Williams or whatever you know uh on those topics so we, one of the conversations where I think there were 30,000 people that went this year. What is the number of people where you just don't even consider going? You know, is it, it when, when that conference has 250,000 people, do we skip it? You know, I mean, because now, now it's Wall Street, it's, it's a normie conference. And it's going to get that way, though. It's not just going to stay at 30,000 awesome people. It's going to grow and grow and grow. True. And I guess then does like it become, then it's like, do you then start having conferences for like the Bitcoin transaction conference where it's talking about like transactions and how you can like, or like Bitcoin block explorer conference where you talk about, you know, like your passion for block explorers and things like that. Maybe, maybe it goes down that route. Um, I don't know. Um, my buddy worked in search marketing and he said it was the same trajectory of that, right? They had their conferences, they got bigger, 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 but then sort of the core guys felt that that was too big. So they split off and started a smaller one. And guess what happened? That one got bigger, 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 and then got bought by the big guy. So I, I, my hope for Bitcoin, but also fear is just the reality that that community that we sort of talked about, what's the difference between a crypto event and a Bitcoin event? And the answer is the community. That community can't sustain itself at scale. Not the way that Bitcoin can scale to every single person in one form or another. We're just waiting for either more infrastructure or more UX or more knowledge or education or more acceptance or more regulation, right? And it's just a, it's a waiting game and Bitcoin doesn't give a fuck, right? It'll wait a decade. It couldn't give a fuck of when people are ready. It'll, when people are ready, it'll, it'll be there. So, so Bitcoin can scale that way, but that sort of community, that's, that's my big, not fear, right? Cause I get it. That's what Bitcoin is born to do. But I, I don't know that I want to go to a 200 and a you know, quarter million people wearing Patagonia vests and khakis and, you know, just trying to figure out how we flip this on the New York stock, whatever. Yeah, I get you. It kind of like becomes, it starts to feel played out maybe, I suppose. And like, yeah, which, um, which it's going to, there's no other, it's going to be the hugest thing in the world. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, I think I think you're right. I I I do. I love talking to meeting like Bitcoiners for sure. And uh, uh, but obviously, I you know I've got a shit on them too. So I guess I could say like when you're in Miami, like it, was it the only place? I feel like it's the only place in the world, the Bitcoin conference in Miami, where you could get advice on Bitcoin, monetary politics, and things. But also, you could get advice on your diet from a complete expert, um, and also advice. <laughs> No, you know, where, you know where I'm going with this. Um, no, I, I wish there was a Twitter filter where like, listen, yes, I believe that you are a technical wizard when it comes to decentralized consensus mechanisms. The fact that you only eat, you know, cow liver is interesting. I just, I just don't give a fuck. And I'm going to eat pasta and bread and I'm gonna eat my seed oils, fuck all y'all. You know what, sesame seed oil is delicious. And if if when I live to 95, you live to 100, good on you, you know? 